Alrighty, how's it going everybody? My name is Mark. I'm going to call my channel Mark's Music Place. If you're new to the channel, um, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, write some comments. Uh, it all helps the channel. Now, the video I did before this was about how to use the analog console in your home recording studio. Now I'm going to talk about how to route it, um, how it's routed, so that way um you know how to route one in case you don't have one like this because there's so many different types of consoles uh it's hard to really pinpoint exactly one but hopefully the idea is you'll get the is the concept will be the same so the last oh i'm hitting the, i'm hitting the scroll button no oh, get, get out of there i'm hitting the the, the zoom button get back get back 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 okay i gotta stay away from that button it's easy to touch Okay, this I, last one I was demonstrating through through Cakewalk, but I'm gonna demonstrate through Studio One and let you know that this can be done in any doll. It doesn't matter if you're using Pro Tools, Logic, it doesn't matter because we're focusing on the console. Now, the console is broken down like this. Uh, each channel, um, you're gonna have your microphone input. So this is your gain knob, easy at the top, for the microphone, for the, for the preamp. Every console like this will have a preamp. So there is a line input for instruments to go, or instruments or a direct line, um, line, level in, line level in sources to go through the line, or microphone sources. So you can switch between the two. You can use the mic or a line. Just like you would if you had an external piece of preamp gear in a rack. Same thing. Except this one has a direct out so you can record from that channel to an external re uh, re to an external recording source. And then there is an insert because you want to insert a piece of gear on that channel. Then there's the preamp. Then there's an EQ section. It's almost like you're looking at a, uh, like a channel strip. But that's, what, that's why they're called channels. Except they're not individual. They're all channels on the board, right? And then you have your auxiliary sends for, aux for routing, to routing to auxiliary channels out of the board. And then there, this one, this board actually happened to happen a second mix section to listen to a second mix if you wanted to. But this also, there is the fader, main fader. There's the pan. There's the solo, there's the mute, and then there's the bus assignments, the send the bus to route the buses. Other than that, that's the basic layout of a channel in the console. There's 24 of them, so there's they're all identical, which tells me there's 24 microphone preamps on this board. So you have 24 microphone preamps. So that gives you plenty of preamps to track a band, right? Now, with that being said. If you wanted to, you can insert microphones. Um, like I have a microphone on channel nine. So all I have to do is start talking into it. I have signal, right? There's signal. And all I got to do now is just unmute the channel, bring the fader up. Okay, so now the fader up, now I can start talking into the microphone. So, because I'm using the preamp on that channel. For this microphone too easy right so now i'm going to i'm going to engage the eq turn the eq i'm going to engage the eq a little bit all right now i'm using the eqs on this as well so there you have it all right so there all right so if i want to use the eq and uh preamp that's what i'm doing Now, you can do that, and the, 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 how you would do that is you can use all 24. You use the preamps on, and so forth, whether you want to use the microphone or an instrument or on every individual channel. Now, what, so that's like, I know some people think, of, okay, all right, got that part, that's too easy. And, of course, you can label each channel what you want. You can put whatever you want on each channel, kick, snare, if you're, if you're micing a drum set or whatever. You want the only drawback to this particular board 
versus other boards is some boards will have a, a ha, will have a phantom power per channel. That's ideal. This one uh, only will engage the phantom power on a condenser mic, um, and you can't you in a it in groups of eight. But that's a different that's a different video. So moving on, then you have your bus assignments. So the point of this, the point of this is that not only can you record direct out on each channel. So if I, for example, if I was going to come in Studio One, I got this my keyboard here, right? I have a keyboard patch here. So if I undo these channels, bring the volume up. This piano, right? Because I got it, I got it on those channels, these channels right here. I have the direct out of the channel. This is how it's routed. Is direct out to come in, into the interface. So all uh, because all of my keyboards are going into a mixer. Um, even this keyboard, if I turn it on, is going into a mixer. All right, my mixer is here. It's a digital mixer. It's controlled by software, but it's still all of them. So that way, I have all my synths and everything. Right. So now, all that direct out. So. It's routed to go to that mixer. The mixer's output is designed to come out of the that mixer to come into that those channels, and that way I can monitor it through the, the through the console for recording. So if I was to come into, I'm in Studio One. Uh, if I'm in Studio One, and I want to see, um, for example. Okay. All right. Okay, I got I forgot to set this up. So Okay. All right, done. All right, now I want I want this to see All right, so I'm going to arm this. So now my Studio One, because I have it coming out of my mixer into channels, this channel's on the console, and the direct out is going into line uh, seven and eight, right here. Input seven and eight, because this 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 con this interface. This particular interface has it has one, two, three, four. Where there's four, four inputs because those are microphone preamps on this interface, and then five, six, seven, and eight, which do not have preamps. They're just inputs. So five and six and seven, eight. I use five and six for the output of my my. Um, preamp here so this focus right preamp within so if I send stuff through this focus right preamp that's going to come out of the output of this preamp into five and six so if I want to use that preamp but since I'm using coming through the console um, because I'm running through the console of the of the um, through the console the direct out is going into seven and eight so I set my my doll to C7 and 8 input in, in Studio One. And because I see 7 and 8 on Studio One, there is signal in Studio One. So now I can record this whatever gonna come from these boards into Studio One. How I that's I, it's ready to go. So the outputs, once I do all my recording into Studio One. If I was to record something into Studio One here, and um, all 
Okay. Uh, let's see. Do I want to pre count? Click in play. Um, let me see. All right. Mention on on. Mention on off. So now I can play something, record something. I'm going to go ahead and get my mixer window out of the way. I'm ready to record. So. I'm ready to record. I hit play um, on the track. I'm ready. I'm recording. I'm recording. So. Right. Stop. Go back. Hit play. Now. It's recorded. It just recorded what I just did, right? So now the outputs, how it's routed, because this console, now that not everyone's gonna get a mixer that has that split. This is why these type of consoles are more ideal for recording. If you can get your hands on a console that's designed like this, because sometimes you have to use you're like, well, I'm sometimes you have to send the output of your interface into other channels. Well, this has 48 channels, so, but sometimes people don't have a mixer that has 48 channels or whatever. Sometimes they have some of the 24 channels or 32 channels or whatever. What's nice about a console like this is that I can dedicate all 24 channels for recording for sources to record into my DAW. That's what's great about a console like this. The output of my interface which are here, these are these colored uh, cables, are now returning into a separate set of inputs on the same channels. So 1 through 24 would be inputs to record stuff. Drums, keyboards, instruments, microphones, whatever, you know, whatever. I have another set of 24 um, inputs for returns here. 1 through so you got 1 through 8, 9 through 16, 17 through 24 here. The reason being, for that very reason, is I can split the console so I can have multiple sources on the same channel and I just go between the two. And that was the purpose, what the purpose of that was for that, so that you, in the old days, this would have recorded to a tape machine. Whether it would be a Tascam DA88, some ADATs, an actual 24-track Studer tape machine or whatever, you would run a direct outs to a tape machine. The returns from the tape machine would then go into these, these right here. All these. 24 returns would come back in. And you would just flip the console from monitoring what's coming from your live room while you're ready to record whatever instruments on those whatever you have, whatever you have mics or instruments on these, on these inputs, once you've done record it into your tape machine, but in this case we're using a DAW, like Studio One or Cakewalk or Logic or Reaper or Harrison Mixbus or whatever you're using, and all that's coming routing through the interface. That's why the inputs on your interface and the outputs are not connected, okay? So when you record into the input, so the output of the DAW is now that I recorded that, the output is going to come out lines one and two. So this is lines one and two, red and blue here, into channels one and two here, red and blue. So it's going to come out of into channels one and two because it says lines one and two in the DAW, right? Because that's where I got it assigned. And so I can come back, I can play this, this track after I do all my editing or whatever, if I'm happy, whatever. As you can see, it's playing.
right? So I play that track, right? So now I can play this track that I just recorded in Studio One. Good to go. And now I can do all my editing. I can come in here. I can uh, come over here. Whatever I want to hit my whatever I want to you know plugins or whatever. If I want to use uh, if I don't want to use an external insert plugin like a compressor on a channel, I got inserts to run compressors. I can insert it on that curve. Like for example, in this channel one and two, I got an insert here, and that's going through this compressor rack. And I can use the compressor in this rack here. I can bypass this, and maybe I don't want to use that, or maybe I want to use that in combination with a plug-in. So because it's going through that, so I might come in here and let me add in a little compressor. Let me add another a set, another compressor. Right, so I'm gonna come over here and add in another compressor. Right, so um, let's see what I want to add. Let me add in. I'll add this compressor for now. Okay, so I just added a plug-in compressor. Gotta excuse the light. My light up there, you gotta excuse that light. I added this compressor here, right? Peak reduction, whatever. Um, change my attack, ratio, whatever I wanna run, whatever ratio I'm gonna run or whatever. Release, uh, dry, wet, or whatever. So now this compressor is gonna play. So, right? Right, so I can use that plugin as well. So I can I can set up the plugins as well as I can use external gear. So I can insert that on a channel, or I can insert it on a buses because I can sign this to buses right now. I got it going to buses one and two, right? Which is going through these two compressors, right? These two compressors here because I have all these compressors and this BB Sonic Maximizer on insert on bus inserts. But you don't, you don't have to do it that way. You can I can take those out and put it on channels if I wanted to, All right? So I have um, the output. The output um, so the buses are going route to buses one and two. So I can send these channels to buses. And that way I can send all if I had drums or I can take all my outputs. And I can sign them to outputs. And, and I'll go in front of the DAW to the outputs of my interface. And the outputs of my interface will then come into the mixer. And I can mix through the mixer. That's how you can route the board. Um, to use the board. You set your outputs in your doll to come out of outputs in the mixer instead of coming out the master. Uh, the output here. So... All right, so here I got it coming through buses. I come out to the main, right? I could send like this check right here, this track. I could send it to five output five. Now it's gonna come out of output five of the mixer, so it won't come out of his channel now. So if I hit play, it should you five should light up. Right? That's what's supposed to happen. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. All right. So let it play. Right? Or I got, well, seven. So now seven is playing. So... So whatever you can route, how you ever you want to route, um, like three, I put it on sub three. So now this should come out of five. 
So I come back and hit, uh, if I hit five again, right? Now it's gonna come out of five, right? So I'm assigned to the five. Come on, five. Right, so you can send your outputs of your DAW out however you want, okay? And that that's the benefit of recording, so that way you can route out to the mixer. You also have the choice if you're recording, you don't have to record from your direct outs. You can record from your bus outs. This console has bus outs here. So if I was sent stuff, to, I can send all instruments into the channels, route them to a bus, and then I can record from a bus into the DAW if I want it to. It depends on if you want to group stuff together and record it or you want to record things individually by using direct out on each individual channel. So it just depends on what you're trying to do. Other than that, the master, the master like I did in the other video, once, you re once you've done your mixing and you set all your outputs to come out of your DAW and you got everything coming out from your channels into your buses, and your buses got whatever inserts you got on your search. A lot of times you would have a patch bay. And I'm going to do a more in depth um, when I explain. When uh, It's going to be better to explain it in my bigger setups upstairs because I got a lot of outboard up gear up there. So it makes more sense. It's more beneficial, especially when you got a lot of outboard gear. Um, so that way you can route, insert stuff on channels or, or the buses. And then once you get done, you can even put a, a, a insert something on the master bus, an EQ, a compressor. You can chain it, but you everything would go through your patch bay for your master bus, and then you would print your master bus back into your DAW for your final print. So that's how you would route, and the output of the output routing would come here. That output would come out not to go to your speakers. The out main out, the main mix met, balanced out is designed to go into the back into the interface to print a, a final mix. The this is there is a main uh, here, but this also says control room. So I have these right here, control room. These are what are going to my speakers. Okay. Then I have studio. That's going to my studio box here. Then I have a separate studio, and that would be in case if I if this console was in a if I was in a control room, and there was another and this would be the control room, and then I would have another room where there'd be the live room tracking room. I could put speakers in there. I can send the output into a set of speakers into the live room to be able to, to send music out there, or to send it to different places like an echo chamber. You can send a speaker there. And you could record microphone and pick up the speaker in the, in the chamber room to pick up the echo of the chamber room. Um, so your control rooms for your volume levels would be here. Your control room volume for these control room speakers. Your studio speaker volumes here. Your headphone volumes are here for controlling the headphone volumes. And so forth. And that's what that is for. That's how you would route the mixer. And this master, like I said, you got your channel. You got your channel fader mixes, your bus mixes, then your your master bus. And this is your master bus. Everything's coming here. So this what you're hearing through the console, everything that you're hearing through the console is being heard through the master. Because everything is being routed to the master. So what you hear in the speakers, that's what's going to resonate through the master, and that's what's going to print. And that's how you would route the board. So I hope that helped. And uh, and I hope that helps people out on how to set your console up. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great one.